now we can treat a number of different people once we know what to do. So here is a, a basic three three panel drown device. Now this device here was donated to us by Trevor James Constable. And um, we have a little card that came with this. Uh, yeah. This is called the Zog instrument. And uh, the little card that was taped inside says Dr. Arthur Zog, DC, Doctor of Chiropractic, Electrotherapy by appointment only, Los Angeles. And what this is, it's a, we could say it's a modified drone, five bank, for testing, treating. For each, each one of the different systems, he's got uh, in and outs here. He's got, uh, looks like these are colors, oh. yellow, green, blue, violet, white, and red, and so on, for each channel. He's also got a rubbing plate down here, and a sequence of switching so that he can plug into any one of these things. These are probably specimen wells of some sort. Right. So that he can... Uh, a little clip here too, so probably had different attachments and pretty much a lot of the people that did these all had their own little original attachments that would go with it in their own way, especially in the equipment that people built themselves. Because in essence, the equipment is an extension of the person's healing ability in a way. So this is when we can look at like the electronic medicine of Colson, where they started even thinking that nuclear medicine might be what was happening, at the same time, completely independent of that, was this work of Ruth Drown, which got away from the electronic equipment and went into just the body's energies flowing through the equipment, as we see with this type of equipment. Mm -hmm. So this was probably early 60s, late 50s piece here, and. Uh, when we turn it around and just take a basic look at the circuit. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, he's got some notes up here, and one of them is he's got a bunch of different cell salts. He's got rates for the cell salts listed up here, plus bioplasm. There's an interesting little uh, parable here, which is kind of hard to read because it's not all there. It says, work, uh, work upon marble, it will crumble. Work upon brass, it will rust. Work upon temples, time will efface them. Work upon people, the results will last. That good philosophy for a radionicist. We'll take a look at the uh, interior of this. This plugged into the wall, which Ruth Drown's equipment completely uh, stayed away from electricity. Well, I have seen some Ruth Drown equipment that had like little uh, oscilloscope screens on. And but what we'll, what we'll see here is how this, um, this has a little transformer and a plug, but uh, if you remember on the uh, front here, um, there were a bunch of indicator lights. Uh, most of these devices are set up so that the electricity comes in and runs the indicator lights and isn't really a part of the radionic circuit. Although it is here because uh, the electricity, one side of the electricity attaches to the wells. No, these these well, are the color uh, these are color lights. Right. Yeah, these are lights for color dials. Okay. Now, one of the reasons for electricity in is there was something called the fundamental ray, which I believe was first worked out in British radionic equipment, at least from my understanding of it. And in some of the early uh, Bruce Copen equipment, there was a dial to direct to the fundamental ray of the uh, subject being treated, mm -hmm. and they used electricity one side of an electric wire. They'd plug both in, but only one side would be connected, and that would ground out to eliminate the need for the fundamental ray dial. We've got three wires here. This is uh, Probably a for a grounding wire. You can see it just goes to a little thing here that was meant to be attached to a pipe or something. So this, this uh, gives you another idea. This is probably resistance wire that's soldered on all the way around here to give you a net resistance. And right. then this is a multiple position click switch. Very cleanly built instrument. Yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> okay, and uh, then we'll pull up on the bench here some equipment that belonged to Dr. Leonard Chapman from Vista, California. 
And this first instrument that I'm bringing up here is a modified drone instrument. And uh, the second one is a treatment instrument developed by Dr. Chapman called the Chapman Low Level Polarizer. Now this is in the radionics book I showed earlier, Radionics New Age Science by Riley Crabb. is a schematic for a modified drone, whereas this one is slightly different from the schematic. This was the actual one in use by Dr. Chapman. I want to show you the back of this here. Um, here's the rubbing plate. This is kind of curious because it goes to this dial, then here, 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 then up to here, and here, then here, here, and here. No, no, first to here, oh. then to here, and here, and here. First to this oh, well, no, that loops back around, right. I started here, and right. through, and then back to here, which is another dial. Yeah, so this is a so, variable resistor, right. and then back to these fixed resistors. It's a slightly different setup, and we've never and used this. And then to this, well, the specimen well, and then to this one. And what's interesting here is um, then this is connected to one terminal, actually the center tap, the center tap of this output transformer. Mm -hmm. The output then um, goes to run this light bulb, period. Right, which, in, which is just the indicator or on light. Indicator. It's just the on light. Or, or so the plug basically runs the on light and then the radionic circuit is attached to the center tap and then terminates at the rubbing plate. So obviously it's not a complete circuit. It would be, this is among the reasons why most of these things have been considered the works of quacks and wackos because in, in terms of um, electricity and electronic circuits and so on, this is a nonsense circuit. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't come from anywhere. There's no way to get any electricity from here to there because it's not a closed circuit. Unless you're working with Tesla currents, which operate very similar to natural energy but, in themselves. But, but we know that this yeah. kind of transformer can't generate that kind of thing. Yes. We, uh, one thing also, it's not on here, and it's really not in any of the instruments that we've seen here, um, but a lot of them had light bulbs that went underneath the rubbing plate to create heat to make it easier to get the stick. Uh, the plate is rubbed and when you get to a certain point you actually get like an electrostatic stick. Mm -hmm. So this looks like a piece of uh, mahogany on top of a copper plate. Right. And it would be rubbed with clove oil also which these, this particular one came with a couple bottles of clove oil that was apparently used to rub in and help give the stick, which may have been Dr. Chapman's personal technique or may have had wider acceptance. Mm -hmm. And this here is just basically a coil inside here. It's plugged in and we haven't had this one open. The screws are potted and wanted to keep it intact. It has several switches on it. Not really sure what they all do. But in the Radionics New Age Science book, it has a basic schematic for this. And Chapman would find her what was going on, diagnosis on this, and then would set just a single rate from 0 to 100, put the person's witness in there, and then simply broadcast it. So this is simply a broadcast treatment device, and it was known as the Chapman Low-Level Polarizer. Chapman obviously felt he was getting good results with this equipment. There's an interview with Dr. Chapman in the book, as we know it earlier. And we should point out, all this development has pretty much taken place in the United States up to this point here. Although we'll, we'll be showing some of the British work. And here's a book, My Search for Radionic Truths, by R. Murray Denning. And uh, Murray Denning uh, passed on last November, 1988. He was rather elderly, and this was a publication of Borderland Sciences. This is our first paperback in 44 years. And Murray Denning was a champion of the Ruth Drown School over in England, which uh, pretty much developed its own schools, which we're going to cover in the next little section here. And if we can focus in on this, here's author's new diagnostic and treatment instruments. So he developed along the lines of Ruth Drown his own system based on it. 